Hey everyone, if you've been wondering how to back up your home to be ready for power outages and aren't really sure where to start, this is the video for you. As a bit of a prepper, I've always wanted to have a way to keep my phones charged, keep the lights on, and run critical appliances when the grid goes down. When I first installed my 9 kilowatt hour solar rooftop array a couple years back, I was really disappointed to learn that I couldn't tap into any of that power when the grid goes down. This is good because it keeps line workers safe, but that means that I'm back to square one when it comes to having backup for my home. I began with a power bank to keep my phone and other small USB devices charged up. Not only is this an affordable first step, it's really something everyone should do because it allows you to take your power on the go if you need to evacuate your house during a flood, fire, or other kind of emergency. If you step up to a larger power station like the EcoFlow Delta Max, then you can power pretty much anything that you can plug into the wall, but you're limited to appliances that are 120 volts and then have an actual plug on them. Anything that is hardwired to your electrical panel, like overhead lights, won't work with this. If you want to level up your system, you need a way to directly power circuits in your electrical panel. You also need a lot more power because hydro appliances like a well pump air conditioning units, or a washer and dryer need a lot more power. In fact, many of these need 240 volts, and that's really been the biggest hurdle so far with power stations. Up until now, they've all been limited to 120 volts of output, and to get 240 volt output, you needed to wire two power stations together with a special box. That gets to be very expensive and really complicated. That's why the new EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra is a real game changer. It has a 7200 watt pure sine wave inverter that can output both 120 volts and 240 volts from a single box, so it can power your entire home. Yes, this isn't the first 240 volt power station, but it's the first to deliver the full 30 amps of current you need to run big appliances. The top unit has an AC inverter, high power DC output, wall charger, dual solar chargers, and USB outputs in a really slick package. The bottom unit is a 6.1 kilowatt hour battery module. You can stack up to five of these to reach 30.7 kilowatt hours of storage for pretty massive run times, even when powering your whole house. The battery modules are heavy at 112 pounds, but the handles make them pretty manageable with two people. These use high quality LFP batteries that are super safe and rated for 3,500 cycles to 80% capacity or a 10 year lifespan. They can work in sub-zero temperatures because they are built-in heating pads to warm the batteries if needed. Interestingly, this is a 100 volt battery which is much more efficient than the 48 volt batteries all other power stations have. Honestly, one of my favorite features of the Ultra is this cable. So this plugs from the main unit into the batteries and look how flat and low profile this is. This is a miracle. It's about time a company figure out how to do this because I'm so sick of the cable sticking out everywhere. Each battery has two ports so you can daisy chain them together, but there aren't any input or output ports. They include this sturdy base with locking wheels in the box with the Ultra that let you securely stack up to five batteries with the inverter and keep them off the floor. They also sent me this wheeled cart that makes the system a lot more portable with a telescoping handle and bigger wheels, but it can only hold a one battery system. Overall, the Ultra feels incredibly well built and I really like the attention to design throughout. There's a big display that shows you the input and output power, state of charge, and time to empty your full. Just like a smaller power station. I like how simple and direct the display is. There's no complex menus or technical jargon, just the key info you need. It has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in so you can use EcoFlow's smartphone app for iOS and Android to monitor and control the Ultra from anywhere. The app has a ton of advanced settings and tools to let you manage your energy use and shift when you charge from the grid to save money on your electric bill. There's a power button in the center and buttons to toggle the AC inverter and DC ports on and off on either side. Behind these covers are a pair of 100 watt USB-C ports and a pair of USB-A ports. These all worked as advertised and I was able to pull over 200 watts. Along the front are all the AC output ports, each behind a slick set of magnetic covers that can be removed if needed. There are four 20 amp three prong plugs for standard appliances, a 30 amp 120 volt RV style plug, and a locking 30 amp plug with 240 volts of output. 
This has a UPS system to switch from wall to battery power in as little as zero seconds, but some of the plugs are 20 milliseconds, so there's a little bit of a mix. For such a massive 7,200 watt inverter, this is super efficient. In my AC capacity test, I ran a 1200 watt load for five hours to drain the battery and measured 5,598 watt hours. That's better than any other power station I've tested. It's also incredibly powerful. It ran close to its 7,200 watt rating for 20 minutes with no problem and was dead quiet. Behind this door is an Anderson power pole for its regulated 30 amp 12 volt DC output, which is perfect for running high power DC appliances. It worked great in my tests and I'm glad they included it, but it's probably not something I'll use much in a unit geared towards whole home backup. Below this is a port to plug in the AC wall charger cable and a switch to toggle between fast 1800 watt charging from a standard outlet and slow 500 watt charging, and you can adjust the charging speed further in the app. In my test, this recharged at around 1700 watts with the standard plug and took around three and a half hours to fill the battery. A key feature is this can output 240 volt power while wall charging. In contrast, something like the Anker 3800 shuts off 240 volt power when charging, which is a huge downside. The Ultra can charge from both solar and AC at the same time, and you can prioritize solar over AC in the app under energy settings. This can actually fast charge at up to 3000 watts of power if you have a 240 volt source. There's an optional adapter to connect this to a level two EV charger or a 240 volt generator with this 30 amp plug. The Ultra has two separate MPPT solar charge controllers built in that can accept up to 5,600 watts together. There's a low power input on the front that connects with this MC4 adapter and can support 1,600 watts of solar from 30 to 150 volts at 15 amps. Even better, EcoFlow added a high power solar input designed to handle large rooftop solar arrays up to 4,000 watts from 80 to 450 volts. I'll show you my solar setup in a bit to give you ideas on how to set up yours. The Delta Ultra system is covered with a five-year warranty and the LFP batteries have a 10-year lifespan when cycled daily. Pricing for this system with the Ultra and six kilowatt hour battery is $5,799. So this is very fairly priced. Be sure to use my links in the description to help support the channel. Now that we have all this power, we need a way to connect it to the electrical panel. And for that, there's two options, an interlock or a transfer switch. In my case, I've installed both so we can talk about the pros and cons of each. Now keep in mind, if you already have one of these set up for an existing gas generator, the EcoFlow Delta Ultra will plug right into that. You don't need any additional installation. An interlock is relatively inexpensive because it's just a simple piece of metal that prevents you from turning the grid and battery breakers on at the same time. When one is on, the other is locked out and vice versa. For example, when connected to the grid, this metal plate makes it impossible to flip the breakers on from the power station, but if you flip the grid breakers off, this piece can slide down and allows the power station breakers to be flipped on. That's all there is to it. And the way we get power into this panel is through a power inlet port. This allows me to plug my power station into this port here, and the wires connect through here into the panel and connect to these breakers. I installed a 50 amp power inlet to be future proof, but since the EcoFlow Delta Ultra only puts out 30 amps with a single unit, you could do a 30 amp input. In my case, I'm using an interlock on a sub panel, but the exact same installation and operation work if you're backing up your entire electrical panel. Because an interlock is so simple, they actually are very affordable. A kit on Amazon will run you 35 to hundred dollars, depending on the model of panel you have, but factor around thousand dollars when you have it professionally installed by an electrician and you include all the materials for wiring and the power inlet. So an interlock is great, but it is an all or nothing situation. Once you flip that breaker, all of the circuits are either running off of grid or they're running off of battery power. For something that's a little more nuanced, you can get a transfer panel. Now a transfer panel allows you to switch individual breakers between grid and battery power. In my home, I decided to install this Reliance 10 circuit transfer switch, which is pretty much the biggest one that they make. This is a manual transfer switch, which means when the power goes out, I need to manually switch each circuit over from grid power to battery power. Usually there's anywhere from four to 10 circuits in these panels. So you have to be much more selective about which circuits you want to back up. A transfer panel will cost more money than an interlock, 
because the electrician needs to wire each circuit to the main panel and then back into the transfer panel. So there's a little bit more installation involved there. There's a power inlet port for the transfer switch and a separate one up here for the sub panel. To connect these together, I need a special cable that has a 30 amp plug on one side that goes into the ultra and a 50 amp plug on the other side that will go into my power inlet ports. Now I didn't want to have any sort of adapters. So luckily I was able to find this cable that has that exact configuration. It's kind of hard to find. So if you're interested in a cable like this, it's linked in the description. All we need to do is plug these two together, turn the AC power on and we're in business. So that same cable can be used to plug into either the interlock or the transfer panel. But what if I want to power both of them at the same time with the Ultra? Well, to do that, I picked up this special Y connector cable. So on this end is a 30 amp plug that will go into the Ultra. And that gives me two female 30 amp plugs on this side. So I can plug two of those cables in so I can light up both the transfer switch and sub panel at the same time. So to simulate a power outage, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my 200 amp service from the street. And we're going to turn on all of the circuits on the transfer switch and flip over the sub panels interlock. With all these circuits running on the Ultra, I have all the comforts of home, including basement lights and sump pump, boiler, dining, living and kitchen lights, internet router, TV, full sized fridge, espresso machine, microwave, bedroom and bathroom lights, water heater, two large air handlers, and the garage door and lights. Somehow I wasn't pushing the Ultra to its limit, so I had to attach three 1500 watt space heaters and run the microwave at the same time to make it overload. When this peaked at 8,900 watts, it gave me a warning, but interestingly, it disabled the front AC units with the space heaters in order to keep the 240 volt output running. So when it overloaded, the lights actually stayed on. In case you're wondering, yes, you can run your central air with this. These are my AC units. This is a two ton unit and this is a much larger three ton unit. And I want to run both of these with the Delta Pro Ultra. So in order to do that, I installed a soft start on the larger three ton unit, just because although it would work, it would really make the lights dim. Adding the soft start makes it very, very easy for it to start up now. There's no issues at all with the Ultra using it. One downside is all of this is completely manual. So if the power goes out, I need to come down in the dark basement, turn on the Ultra and flip a bunch of circuits over, which is fine for me, but probably not very user friendly for my family. For a completely automated backup system with even more scalability, you can install EcoFlow's Smart Home Panel 2, which is essentially an automatic transfer panel with a ton of extra features. If you lose power, it can automatically switch circuits over to the Ultra. Because it's smart, you can control it through their smartphone app to do things like control when the Ultra is recharged off the grid, when costs are lowest, and run certain circuits completely off grid to save on your electric bills. It also gives you a ton of scalability because you can plug up to three Delta Ultra systems into the smart home panel for 21,600 watts of AC output and up to 90 kilowatt hours of battery storage, which is pretty wild. I can't think of a situation where that is not enough power. It's incredible. Installing the Smart Home Panel 2 is best left to a professional electrician, but the install is really easy compared to wiring in a whole home generator or a Tesla Powerwall. Those require a lot of permits and complex installation in comparison. The Smart Home Panel costs $1,899, but you can save even more by buying it as a bundle with the Ultra. Unfortunately, I just don't have the space for another panel, so I couldn't install this at my house, but it's very slick. Even without the Smart Home Panel, you can connect two Delta Ultras together for 14,400 watts of power and 60 kilowatt hours of battery storage. This has a 50 amp output port that can plug right into my 50 amp panels, so I can still scale the system up a lot without the Smart Home Panel too. So let's talk about solar power next because that's a super important part of this whole setup. So the goal ultimately is to have enough solar power that on a sunny day like this, you could recharge your entire system in one day so you can keep up. The most affordable way to get solar panels is to find used residential panels that you can put on your roof or just lay in the yard. In my case, I purchased nine used LG 330 watt panels for a temporary installation. Honestly, the easiest thing to do is just lean it up against a fence or your deck 
as long as it's facing south. Now, this is not good for a permanent installation because, you know, the grass will get in the way. Since they sit on their side, I'm not really worried about them falling over. One of the most common questions I get is how do you take a solar panel on the outside of your house and get the power into your basement? And you don't really want to have to leave a window open or leave a door open or run the cables through. So in my case, what I ended up doing is I drilled a small hole in the side of the house and I have a weatherproof box that I've mounted on the outside and I've run a number of MC4 cables through that. That allows me to connect up to three strings of solar panels securely into the basement. This is completely sealed up from the weather or from animals because I've used this electrical putty on the sides. So it actually works quite well. These are the MC4 connectors from the pair of 330 watt panels outside. These are wired in parallel, so they should be around 40 volts and it is 38 volts. So this is perfect. It's important to always test the voltage before plugging something into the power station to make sure that it's within the voltage range and that it's not wired backwards. If it was, there would be a negative here and you know that you had your positive and negative reversed. I also installed a rooftop array that has six of these solar panels. But to get a look at that, we need to go up on the roof. This fall, I installed six of these LG panels on my metal roof, so I have a proper array that can be used with the Ultra. It's this array here. I chose to wire these as two separate arrays of three panels each, so I could stay under the 150 volt limit of many power stations I have. Two pairs of MC4 cables run down the side of the house in this conduit and go right into the basement. Now I could wire these two arrays in parallel or series since the high power input can handle either scenario, but I'm going with a series connection. In this setup, the voltage is 240 volts as expected, so I can plug this in, twist the disconnect on, and we have power. All nine solar panels together are rated at just under 3000 watts, but in the winter, I'm getting closer to 1500 watts during peak hours. On a sunny day, I can pull in a total of six kilowatt hours of power, which is almost enough to recharge a single battery. So you definitely need a lot of solar if you wanna scale the system up. So that's how you can charge the Ultra up with solar. I love how powerful and flexible the solar chargers are on this thing and everything worked flawlessly. Now solar is my preferred option for keeping everything charged up, but sometimes the sun's not shining and you need a backup to the backup. And that's really where a generator comes in. I strongly recommend getting a natural gas or propane generator so you don't have to deal with any of the hassle of gasoline. I'm using the EcoFlow Smart Generator that runs on either gas or propane. The best way to use a generator with the Ultra is to plug it in and just run it for a couple hours a day. That will let you keep the Ultra charged up if the sun's not shining or there's snow on your panels. So to get the AC power from the generator into the house, you can always throw it in through a window or maybe the bulkhead in your basement. Both of those mean letting the weather in, and that's not really what I want to do. So in my case, I set up a small weatherproof box on the outside of my house with a 120 volt power inlet. So I can just plug this right in. So this cable that is attached to the generator outside terminates right near this top power inlet. So I'm gonna plug that into the Ultra and we'll see how charging works. We're ready to fire it up by just using the EcoFlow app. It's as simple as pressing a button and the generator will start. It charged the Ultra at a steady 1,660 watts, but I did have to change the charging speed from 1,800 watts down to 1,600 watts to avoid overloading the generator. This will recharge a battery in about four hours and is a good safety net for your system. I'm using the Ultra to run a few key circuits like my fridge, microwave, and water heater off-grid to save on my electric bill. So what's really important, I don't run out of battery power. I've been using the EcoFlow app to keep tabs on the Ultra, but it's really easy to forget to check and wake up to a dead fridge. That's why I really like the new EcoFlow Power Insight Energy Monitor, because I can glance at the battery level as I walk by, make sure everything's okay. It's a 10-inch tablet with internal battery that lets you monitor your system at a glance. It includes a magnetic wall mount, but for now, I just have it on a table and I run a USB-C cable into the back to keep it powered. It has a bright screen that shows the state of charge, input and output power, and lets you control the AC and DC outputs. You could repurpose a phone or tablet and run the app to do something similar, but this is just nicer overall with a richer display that shows more details in a single view. To make sure I don't run out of power, I'd ideally plug the Ultra into the wall and set the energy management to only charge from AC if the battery drops below 20% to keep it from completely draining. 
Unfortunately, you can't plug a power station into the wall and power circuits in your panel at the same time, or you'll have a ground loop that could damage the Ultra. You also can't plug the Ultra into a power station with high-speed charging like this Delta, because those just pass through power from the wall when the grid is up. Instead, you need a power station that has a DC wall charger brick, because that doesn't pass through charging, so it isolates the power from the grid. I have the Ultra plugged into this Verios system since it has 240 watt DC charger, so it can charge the Ultra when it gets low and recharge itself at the same time. The modularity of the Verios system means I could add more wall chargers to keep up with heavier loads, or add more battery modules so that's how I make sure the Ultra never runs out of power, even when the weather is bad. Overall, I've been blown away by the Delta Ultra. It just feels so incredibly capable, it never seems to be working hard, and the effort they put into cooling means this never makes any noise, even when under heavy loads. I'll be testing this over the next few months, and we'll do an update video on how things are going, but I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this if you want a true alternative to a whole home generator. I hope this helps you understand how all the pieces fit together so you can start building your backup system.